Sid's dad is abusive. So we only kind of see Sid's dad very briefly in the movie. He doesn't interact with the rest of the family at all, and his one scene seems to be just the guy who supposedly has the TV on where Buzz sees the commercial, and in there, again, we notice that he's alone, everybody else avoids him and doesn't mention him. Uh, Scud immediately cries and cowers away when near him, and around him we can see discarded soda cans, which might as well be a G-rated replacement for beer cans, so yeah, you can get an image here. Sid's whole family is broken. Now let's talk about the whole family. So we've talked about the dad, and now we're going to talk about Sid and all the stuff he seems to be able to just get away with, being that this kid handles explosives and rockets that straight up say, keep away from children, and he somehow has acquired them, no idea how he ordered something like this, but he uses that all the time, and blows up shit all the time, and torments his sister, and I'm not one of those fools who say that, like, Sid is, like, a future serial killer or anything like that, no, I'm sure it's just a phase or anything like that, but the thing is, is that, like, none of his parents show any sort of, like, concern or say anything about this, and... Again, he's straight up handling actual dangerous explosives that kids shouldn't have and matches and shit like that. And no way he's doing anything. Like, most of the concern comes from Sid hurting himself. And again, like, the torment he imbues on his sister from fucking with her toys and crap like that. And his mom, she doesn't seem the worst. Like, they don't all seem the worst off. Like, they at least have a house and shit. But, like... I mean, we never really see her around either. She has one line, which is to come over for breakfast, and she at least does that, and Hannah at least seems to trust, like, going over to her when Sid does something, but she doesn't really seem to do anything about it, and I don't know, when you put everything together, she's just probably way too fucking busy that she just can't even bother to care or do anything about anything, even if she wants to, and she can only feed Sid Pop-Tarts for breakfast, and... We'll be talking about all of them a bit more later on. Buzz always knew deep down he's a toy, he's in denial. So this is a kind of popular theory that helps explain stuff and put more context into things like why Buzz freezes when Andy plays with them, which they purposely never really explain. But anyway, the belief is that Buzz always knew deep down that he was a toy, but he was just not accepting it and pretending to be a space ranger and trying to brush it off. And... You know, some evidence is, as we mentioned, why he still freezes up anyways, and how we've never heard about any other toy going through this before, aside from, like, other Buzz Light years, and, like, yeah, like, how did Buzz never see, like, the Made in Taiwan stick like that or anything, or knows that, like, his buns don't do anything, and that, you know, there's all these other talking moving toys, and... Yeah, like, he was just trying to not think it's real the whole time, and then, like, the commercial was just, like, the final piece of, like, evidence on top of, like, everything Woody was doing that was just in his face. Like, no, you can't deny this anymore. This is just what the case is. How does Woody feel pain? So this is just a funny little observation in the movie that just makes you wonder a bit, because throughout this, we see stuff happening to Woody, like... Buzz pulling on his arms and Woody getting his hand caught in Buzz's helmet and then of course sits magnifying glass and he screams funny and feels pain from it and it's like, well wait a minute, Woody's like a toy made out of plastic and fluff, how does he even feel any of this stuff? And like, I know they can see and talk and too and shit like that, but uh, it's just, just more funny because like we also see like Woody being tossed around and stuff like while Andy's playing with him and he doesn't seem to feel anything and I don't know, it's just a weird little thing. The Christmas Toy. This is a Jim Henson short that came out about 10 years before Toy Story, and since Toy Story has been accused of ripping it off, both stories involve toys that come to life when people aren't around and they go back into position when they come back, and there's a toy that's in fear of being replaced as the favorite, and there's a toy that believes that they're the real deal. And that's why people think it rips off this. Now, the thing about this, though, is that the comparisons I just told you kind of end there. Yes, it is a very jarring and close comparison, but otherwise the plot and the characters and stuff in this are 
very different, and Satoi, who believes that they're real, has a much more minor role in this movie compared to Buzz. And, I don't know, it's just kind of hard to have, like, a clear, unbiased opinion or view on this, just because this is the type of shit that, like, a crappy clickbait YouTuber article, like, all-time tense or whatever, back in the earlier 2010s, would fucking tell and yell you about and be like, oh, we'll get this, and get attention from it, and... I don't know, like, it might just be a coincidence, it, it, maybe it could be an inspiration, I don't know, it's probably most likely a coincidence, like, this was a little bit of, um, obscure, and, like, the reason why they went with toys is because they already did the tin toy before, and, again, it's just what it looked best with the animation and models at the time, as I said, in the first layer, which checks out, and I don't put above Disney to completely rip off some shit and act like nothing happened, but, I mean, this is Pixar back in their early modest days when they were still pretty isolated and small, so I don't know. It's up to you if we ever get any, like, definitive, like, confirmation or anything, but I'll probably talk about more what I think about the Christmas toy and stuff in the comment section to not stay on this too long, but I do recommend that you go see it. Why don't Sid's toys talk? So we all know about Sid's toys, the ones that are put together from other ones, and I mean like obviously some of them don't have mouths or anything, so of course they can't talk, but what about ones like Babyface, I believe it's called? Why don't they talk? Like, I mean, I know, yes, it's a hybrid toy that was smashed together and stuff, but, like, I mean, the mouth is still there, the other one's still functioning, and we got the duck head one that quacks, and why does he quack and not talk? I don't know, and it's just another kind of odd question that you probably don't really think about first, but then when you do, it's a bit weird. Sid really isn't bad, so I just briefly mentioned this, being that Sid, despite that some stupid heads that see the movie now might look at this and be like, oh, he's gonna grow up and fucking kill people and shit like that one awful little piece of crap. And no, Sid, he's an innocent kid who doesn't know any better. We've talked about his life situation and parents and before already. Like, he doesn't have a really good upbringing and no really good, like, parental figure to kind of step in and do anything. And again, it's probably just a phase. Like, I mean... It's been said before, but you probably went through something like this before, knew somebody who did something like this, where they would just do really fucking crazy and sadistic shit to toys or whatever, who probably turned out fine. And, like, yeah, aside from that, he seems at least really creative. Like, yes, he's doing shit to toys that he doesn't know are alive, by the way, until the end. And, yeah, like, I mean... Putting a fucking baby head on a spider and a fishing pole of legs, hey, that's cool as shit. He should be a toy or character designer in the future, and I'm sure maybe he grows off it. Scud running as fast as a truck. Yeah, another weird, funny observation that's just whatever, but still fun to point out is that Scud is able to keep up with the truck no problem. I know RC is able to keep up with the truck too, but I don't know if the way his battery strained it probably implies that he was going like way beyond what he's normally capable of as a toy. But Scud, however, is just this normal little bull terrier. And, like, I know that usually, like, all four-legged animals can run faster than, like, any fucking, like, Olympic-level human. But I don't think bull terriers are necessarily known for their sprinting or anything like that. And Scud doesn't seem to be the most active dog either. <laughs> and, yeah, it's just a funny thing that... Yes, the truck is also driving down a suburban street, too, but I doubt it's, like, going at a fucking crawl, and he seems to be going pretty fucking fast, so, yeah, it's just funny to see that Scud is able to speed over there, no problem. Other drivers seeing the toy move. Probably the most egregious thing that's... Probably also the most funny thing to notice with the movie that, again, you might not quite, like, pick up on at first, is that during that climactic scene, we see the toys driving over to the truck, and the back of the truck is open, and you see the other toys watching them and cheering them on and shit, and as that's also happening, you see other cars in the background driving, and they definitely see that shit. They definitely see the two toys driving on the toy car, speeding towards the car, and the other toys in the truck in the back going like, Oh, Woody and Buzz, come on, come on! And that's all right there in front of them. They must be like, what the fuck? fuck is going on, <laughs> and it's hilarious. 
Anyway, we've gone through the wanders, and next we're going to get deeper into the